And these are just suggestions I had eight years ago of what kind of research people could do to uh, study all this kind of stuff further. I don't have it in the slides, but I should mention that I saw a fairly close correlation between some of the things Bob Lazar said about how the propulsion systems worked that he was researching and this research uh, that I did. Not a 100% correlation, but a close correlation. I started wondering if some of the people we worked with were deliberately feeding them information that was close, but actually not correct as, as a way of putting people off who were actually trying to understand it all by listening to Bob Lazar. And all of this stuff is explained uh, in the book I came out with eight years ago. There's there's things in it that are not correct now. I see uh, hopefully not much of it, but there are things if, if I ever come out with another publication, I'll try to make some corrections. But uh, for now, it looks like the DOD doesn't want me to do any of that. So the basic uh, benefits of spin wave technology are uh, we don't need to cause global warming anymore. We can use energy sources primarily, or basically I'm saying non-petroleum, non-fossil fuel energy sources that would not cause global heat anymore. And in fact, uh, characteristics of these a lot of these devices is they get cold during operation so to a small extent anyway, their operation would re be reversing global warming. The technology can be used to improve transportation and communications. Spin wave technology makes it easier to explore, explore space, using it for propulsion systems and for communication it allows us to communicate with our neighbors. Basically that means uh, I'm contending that probably uh, people in other solar systems around us, uh, none of them use rectilinear motion of charged particles for communication. They probably have all figured out the spin wave stuff and that's why we don't ever see any signals in any, any of these uh, SETI projects trying to pick up signals from outer space. They, they probably don't do it this kind of a prehistoric way that we came up with. And this is just uh, telling you where this all started for me is when I, in my boredom after my work, uh, spent a lot of my time studying a lot of these unusual anomalous power producing devices. And this is a lot, maybe eight years ago is when I finished, so it was 15 years ago when I kind of started all of my research. Uh, there's tons more misinformation out on the internet now. Mm, during that seven-year period, close to the end of end of it, um, this is just interesting thing to I'm recalling. I got a phone call inside my company. I can tell because uh, when we get an outside call, it rings twice with each ring. When we get an inside call, it rings once each ring. So I get a call that's ringing once each ring. And the guy's telling me I work in another department in at my company, and we're under government contract to track down everybody in the world who's coming up with these things. And we see your internet activity and uh, see some of the things that you've put out there in the news group asking questions. And we want to know, do you want to join us and help us track down everybody in the world who comes up with these things? And I kind of told him and politely, uh, no thanks. And I'm kind of surprised I've never heard back from them since. And I wonder sometimes if they're just kind of being lazy about it and they don't really look up too much information because all they have to do is secretly keep monitoring what I'm finding out. But that's just another uh, unbased conjecture on my part. I don't really know. And 
And this is just a little bit about me. I grew up on a small ranch in the hill country near Austin, Texas. Um, my dad was uh, in the Air Force. He retired when I was four, and that's when we moved to Austin. He was in the Air Force OSI. He's a director for a while, and then he went to work at the Pentagon. He worked directly under the general in charge of all OSI. <clears throat> but he didn't work on a lot of top secret projects. He did kind of boring stuff like manage the budget for improving the railway systems in Alaska because they wanted a access to their radar stations and that kind of thing. And he was involved in code activities trying to find commie infiltrators during the Cold War who might try to sabotage our SAC air bases in the United States. So um, never heard any stories from my dad about any kind of top secret projects anywhere close to, to this stuff. Anyway, after I got out of the Air Force, I went to college four years, and then I went to work uh, right out of college for this defense contractor who I'm still with now. Uh, and I'm still there today, even eight years after making the slide presentation. Been there 28 years now. And right about the time I made this slide presentation, presentation is when I got married and eight years later now I'm married still and got a couple of young kids and that's all about me.